So I have an email server and currently I am trying to set it up to where I can basically have my own uh, MX. I want to be able to receive mail and send mail. There's an awesome guy, Jeff9023. He talks about how OVH SSD Cloud is okay. He's using OVH for $3.49 for sending email. He's got Postfix, Dovecot, OpenDKIM, uh, SPF record, domain key record, DMARC record, RDNS, and Spam Assassin. After setting up your email server, test it via mail tester. So this is all, this is a pretty good uh, summary of like what a, what a config looks like. And uh, OVH SSD is fairly decent. I, I do like it. So we're going to go through the steps on how to set up your own, uh, your own MX. And I, I'm actually just going to go over a few different types of MX, uh, MX solutions and tell you what I think is the best and easiest. So first of all, I'd like to point out that Microsoft Exchange Server is a pretty awesome thing, but this is typically used in an inter in an enterprise environment. So for example, let's say that you have a Windows server and you'd like a, a nice MX, uh, like a, an Exchange server for your mail, then Microsoft Exchange makes sense on a Windows-based environment, but here's the deal that is going to cost you $741.99 just to license the server software. That is with standard. That, I believe, gives you like between one to five mail databases. If you want to go up to a more advanced licensing option, then you're paying... Um, you're paying to have up to a hundred mail databases, but point is this, okay? The pricing is kind of ridiculous on Microsoft Exchange Server, and then in addition to that, you have to get a client license. Um, so and, and then like for example, there's some Microsoft Outlook client license. Um, you can access things through the web, the web, but <laughs> no, it's just, it's irritating. Okay. I will say it's annoying the way that Microsoft licenses stuff. So let's just kind of skip over that and see what open source alternatives there are for Microsoft exchange server, because that's, that's probably what we want. And besides we want to run this on Linux because it's going to be cheaper and I have to pay for the Microsoft licensing on everything that we do. Right. So there is something called Zimbra. Zimbra has a lovely open source collaboration suite. So for example, we could go ahead and click on the 64-bit uh, TGZ file. And that's uh, 233 megabytes. I'm gonna go ahead and open it and show you just, uh, just what that's about so we can see. And uh, so yeah, this is 8.8.15 release. Um, that's been uh, issued 17 December 2019, but I, I'm going to pull this open with 7-zip. So after opening the open source Zimbra download for Ubuntu, we are looking at um, this. And then uh, as you can tell, you've got this build stuff going on in here. Uh, your bin, data docs, lib, etc. Uh, so we've got the binary release the source release installing from binary and installing from source so read me source um yeah so that's that hopefully hopefully this is able to be figured out but yeah basically what i I'm thinking you would do is you'd like pull this stuff out and then you would you would CD inside of this and that so yeah we would use this tar to extract out the TGZ or whatnot then we'd CD inside of here 
and then we would run this uh, install sh. So ideally, that, that's kind of how that would go. And then from there, you'd be able to use um, you'd be able to use Zimbra. Of course, going through all the configurations and whatnot. So Zimbra is one option if anybody's interested. I'll show you a quick picture. So just kind of showing off the uh, beautiful Zimbra mail interface. So of course that comes with your calendar, contacts, etc. Um, so yeah, you can see Zimbra looks beautiful. Um, I, I remember using it a long time ago and it looked like trash and it looks like their their collaboration suite uh, has, has gotten a bit better. So I don't know for sure if this is the open source one or not, but e either way, I know that Zimbra has their open source collaboration suite and you can self host it um, on on for example Ubuntu or, or whatever and then yeah so th this is kind of what what you could end up getting which is nice and then I'm going to show you some uh, some other options quick there is also horde groupware so you can see this looks kind of nice you've got these um, you've just got got these beautiful little options you can delete stuff go into your drafts so yeah pretty cool got uh you know download pdf all that good stuff um and then of course log out you can search of course they also have the calendar and check out what's going on for the month so overall, just a really simple, cool, uh, cool option. I, I'm gonna show you just a, a couple more. So there's eGroupware Community Edition. This is um, th this is available if you'd like to get this. Um, it, it looks like this is more focused on uh, m maybe like a German user base. I I'm not totally sure. I mean, you, you very well may be able to get through this without, uh, you know, w without it being uh, German. But yeah, it, it looks it looks like they definitely uh, cater to. It looks like they definitely cater to Germans. But you're more than uh, welcome to try this out and see what eGroupware does for you. So yeah, this is what eGroupware looks like. Not the most beautiful option, but I mean, hey, if it works and you like it, then I guess you you could go with it. Scalix is a uh, it's an alright one. You could use this if you're looking for a free. Um, you could definitely maybe get away with using this if you're looking for something that's free for five users. Their community edition uh, provides uh, five free users to you. Let me see. Uh, right here. There you go. So, yep, the community edition says available in five or ten premium user packs. Yeah, not, not totally sure on that one, but yeah, you, you could certainly... You could certainly go ahead and give this a try if you're wanting to. So yeah, you just uh, do that free download community edition and see if that is something that you like. If you are looking for something on Windows, I have heard really great things about HMail Server. Uh, keep in mind that this is uh, this is used by like governments, schools, etc. I mean, HMail server is a really great option if you need to run on Windows. So you just come here, download it, and uh, and then take a glance through the documentation. I also know that they have a, a form, and so yeah, you could you could definitely get to uh, get to using this stuff, setting it up for. Uh, Windows and yeah, they've they've got some really cool options. Uh, it's it's definitely uh, pretty darn good, really really good for you know the price point. Free can't beat it. Now I'm just gonna start throwing random different uh, mail email server stuff at you. Uh, Dovecot definitely a huge thing, uh, very widely used. Um, a lot of times you hear people talk about Dovecot paired with Postfix. Um, definitely check out both uh, Postfix, and uh, and then you can check out um, XM, e Exim, 
postfix postfix. Uh, these are, are great, so you can utilize SMTP authentication directly against DevCot's authentication backend. Um, so that's that. You can very easily go in, download it, get instructions if you are needing to upgrade it. Um, there's a lot of different things. Uh, documentation is very, very, very useful. Go ahead and read documentation. Don't figure it all out on your own. You will spend forever. Um, definitely highly recommend this beautiful, um, this beautiful mail cow. So mail cow makes it super easy to set up everything for you and they have um they have a, a docker so yeah if you want to for example have this uh you know dockerized then uh th then yeah you, you definitely can easily go in and follow the documentation they kind of talk you through uh, installation so the installation is incredibly simple. Um, I, I have, I believe I've followed this through and I did get it up and working. Um, so you just need to be making sure that you're using uh, a provider, a hosting provider that supports sending email because if you don't, well, then they could firewall off your uh, web or I should say your traffic for trying to send mail. So like, it, for example, if you're using port 25, they might just not allow port 25 connections and then you are screwed. Uh, Roundcube is a, a very beautiful, um, it's a beautiful web-based client for, uh, for webmail. And you can definitely see here, uh, if we quick glance at the screenshots, this is gorgeous. So. Uh, a lot of people that I know like, they definitely like the uh, latest theme of Dovecot, or not Dovecot, Roundcube, I'm sorry. And so yeah, it's just uh, really great for free. I uh, can't, uh, can't really compete with all, all these different free options. Uh, so I, yeah, I think the main reason Microsoft stays in business is because everybody is just really comfortable running all the Microsoft server crap. Um, you've got the open change project, which is very old, but it was, uh, it was a portable open source implementation of Microsoft exchange server and exchange protocols. Not super sure how well this works or if it even does work. It's been uh, last committed to quite a long time ago. And then archive, Opteryx, I, I think is how you say it. Um, this is like for archiving email. So not necessarily sure that this is what this is what you would want to be using or really looking into, but it's just a, a random mention. And I just think more than anything, it's cool, all the different options that are out there. And it's really, it's on you to research them and set up your own mail server if you want. So you can host your own mail, uh, receive mails, at your own custom domain. And, and at the end of the day, what you can feel happy about is for uh, each year you have a domain, it, only it can only cost you, I think, I don't know, like it's not not too much more than $10. You can get some really good deals on domains. And then to run the server, if you're using like OVH, I know it's between like 3 to $4 a month about, and so that's not bad. That's really not bad to pay, you know, such a, a little amount for a domain per year, and then to only be paying like between three to four dollars a month to host your own server, as long as you know how to go through and set up your own, um, you know, your own MX and uh, your own your own web client if you want that, or you could go use a client like Thunderbird and connect in, and uh, yeah, there's there's that. Just just some really cool, interesting stuff to think about for mail, and I'm looking forward to experimenting more with mail into the future.